Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I am in Austin, Texas, and let me tell you, I have quite an interview for you. We're going to be talking to the CEO of Arc Dynamics, Lewis, and again, we're in Austin. Yesterday, I was able to see the simulator at his workshop, and I was able to experience it myself. We're going to be talking a whole lot about that and more, but first, just to get us kicked off, let's get into your present day pro project. So first off, how did the idea for Arc Dynamics, like how did that even come about, like the current project? The call out was, look, I'm looking for something to do, a new mm. project, something to, to work mm. on. And one of the things that came out was Johnny, a friend of mine, been, again, been around for many years in Cyprus, and visits and helps out. Mm. Uh, he, you know, he, he's into his gaming, and he's also somebody I noticed as a trends, trend follower. He, mm. he, he seems to be right there. He knows what's late. coming yeah, up. Yeah, and he took, well, yeah, he yeah. just follows it right there. Yeah. And he's into his, you know, high risk sport things and that sort of thing. Mm. He likes it. Mm. Older now, so he takes it a bit calmer, but he was doing his you know, trikes and what they sure. uh, what mm -hmm. call it, whatever the three wheeler skilling bikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was into his e biking and stuff like that and he liked it. And then he came in and he's like, Look, there's nothing in motion simulation for gaming. I was like, mm. that's I, my initial thing was that comp be true. No, it can't be true. Surely yeah. there's something. He goes, no, there's nothing, and there's nothing. I said, right, do come back to me with some, you know, numbers or something. He goes, the cheapest you can find is like six thousand mm. dollars, right, for a six stuff. And you know, back then, you know, somebody says six stuff to me, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and that's just four years ago. So it's been intense, right? I could see the motivation, right? It's an obvious thing. If you yeah. if you add motion to gaming, surely it's worth something it's, and if you do it at a good price right mm -hmm. if you're looking at six thousand dollars and a big huge monstrosity of a machine yeah well who's going to put that where and you know to do what move at 10 hertz because of, that's the first thing i saw i looked mm -hmm. at the machine i just went to the set sign and i looked i said okay that's why that's six thousand dollars mm. it's because they're using big huge gearboxes like this right mm -hmm. so you know i said look then there and then i said are you sure there's nobody who's doing, because I looked at it and I'm like, surely we can do direct drive. It was immediate to me. Mm -hmm. Like I saw the gearbox, I'm like, well, why are they using gearboxes? Just put you know, direct drive motors like they do in hoverboards, because mm -hmm. the hoverboard motors are direct drive motors. And I said, are you sure no one's done that? He goes, no. So I'm like, well, we should try and do that then. <laughs> <laughs> get me three hoverboards because yeah. I need six motors. So yeah. get me three hoverboards. We bought yeah, secondhand. We honestly, we bought yeah. secondhand hoverboard motors. I got me Harley to do a basic frame that lay out for us. We went to an, a friend of ours who's got some steel and cut it up. Honestly, mm -hmm. just literally just cut pieces of steel, put them together, welded what we had, and put everything to it. <laughs> when you see the pictures, have you, yeah. we, should, yeah. we should actually get the pictures yeah. at, at some point. But yeah. Mihaly did the code as well. We, we got it to actually respond. I did a lot of work on the motor controllers and mm -hmm. stuff. I was doing tests and lift, lifting up weights on the desks. And mm -hmm. Typical, you know, tinkerer in the moment, yeah. working and trying to figure out what's the best path to get this thing to do what we expect it to do. Mm -hmm. We got to a point where, yeah, we had all six motors running, working, because we had to convert mm -hmm. them and put encoders and all those sorts of stuff on there. Um, and I stood on it. And yeah. I, you know, I got it to set up in a set motion going up and down, and I stood on it and it lifted me up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, videoed it and I sent it off to Mihaly. I was like, yeah, technically yeah. at that point, and we had a big debate and we still argue about it. But <laughs> I believe I'm right. This is magnetic levitation, mm -hmm. right? When you, when you, because that's what I saw when, mm -hmm. when, when we said direct drive, and I started thinking about it. I was like, well, when you take six direct drive motors, and the only thing that produces motion is mm. the motor drum moving and that's a magnetic drum, yeah. then you're linking those six mechanically together. If you take the linkages out, if you just evaporate them for yeah. a second in your mind and you just see these little motors rotating, well every rotation, every movement translates mm. to a movement of the table and those movements can only happen from electromagnetic pulses. Mm. Therefore this is you know, magnetic levitation of a format. Right. Yes. My partner in Cyprus disagrees with me. <laughs> the AI sort of agrees, but <laughs> it's a hack, right? Yeah. And obviously, you know, 
we got it to work, we could lift us up, it could move us, mm. but it was overheating very quickly, mm. right? So the invention, the time when you turn around and say, well, now you, you need to go speak to lawyers and get things mm -hmm. uh, patented, is that step is where you the one the first step is putting the direct drive in okay yes. that's that's easy you might get something there but once you've done it and then you find the problem mm. which is the heat and then you solve that problem mm -hmm. well now you've got the inventive step right mm -hmm. so now you can go in and try and get that protected mm -hmm. and then carry on and we did all of that in that sense right we got that to work with the compensation and worked out beautifully mm -hmm. and then yeah when we started to actually investigate what we had achieved i'm still year four today and it's amazing me yeah. it's, it's generating how, how long ago output. was that by the way how long ago was that so that point of that first like we'll call it i don't know if i should use the word prototype but that first step the uh, like putting all the steel together getting wow. all that three years ago i think Wow, three, yeah, three, three. Or four. I'm blown away because for me to think about like what I was, what I actually was in the other yeah. day, like versus like I, that I'm, step in three years. I can't explain to you the amount of there's synchronicities, right? There's mm -hmm. what we call synchronicities, and I'll explain it in a way that, that I think will make some sense. And mm -hmm. that what we got onto right was we wanted to make an affordable very affordable because mm. that was the whole thing was getting yeah. down to a price what does that, that word mean by the way like affordable and i know you're, you're not at final production or anything like that but like what's a goal when you say affordable well i think we've hit it at the moment at three and a half mm. i think three and a half for the robot on its own mm -hmm. and then five and a half for the robot with the racing mm -hmm. it's not just the racing frame right yeah. it is the racing frame in combination with the last three years mm -hmm. of comprehension, understanding, mm -hmm. tuning, and, and integration into the game, mm. right? So when you get the racing rig, you're also gonna get mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, I can okay. give you this machine as it is, yeah. all right? Have fun with it, honestly. It is, it's, a, it's beautiful, I love it to be bits. It has what we talk about when we say about these synchronicities in that, we're finding more and more benefits to it, right? Mm. So the fact that we needed to compensate the electromagnetics mm -hmm. um, because of the heat generation, because you got gravity working on you yeah. all the time, right? With the pneumatics, so we compensate the electromagnetics with the pneumatics, mm -hmm. automatically made the system extremely efficient mm. at one very important part that we didn't comprehend until and we're still not comprehending, to be honest with you, and I think there's going to be a lot of scientific development in this, in this arena now, mm. in vibrational areas, vibrational. Mm. So we're able to vibrate you at frequencies that go beyond your conscious perception. You're not able, Interesting. You know, so we can go all the way up, so you can feel you know, from a low, high amplitude, yeah. frequency, all the way up to like a thousand hertz, Okay, mm. which is more, you're going to hear that, you're not really going to feel mm. it, but trust me, you know, even at a 0.1 millimeters, if I'm vibrating, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's quite an intense transfer of energy, is another mm -hmm. way of seeing it. I, 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 yeah. think I, I spoke, spoke to you last night when you got, got mm -hmm. off the system, I said, you know, just pay attention to how you're feeling, mm. right, because of all of that energy. It's a lot of energy being yeah. moved into you as you're driving, and you, you're synchronizing right to the whole game you're inside mm. of that i think you noticed that yesterday right oh yeah you got in you were a little bit more oh for blase sure. until you had the first accident and then which was that. the very first turn <laughs> i was like come on all right there go my f1 day yeah but it does that it it brings you in very quickly and that's mm. the part that really is getting into my you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the stuff that is exciting me now mm -hmm. is the aspects to what is possible tomorrow with mm -hmm. the system in combination with AI. Mm. It's scary in some ways. And I've had these conversations at length yeah. with AI. There's an ethics issue and we need to be careful there. Mm. But when you combine what we have with AI and mm -hmm. VR, well, technically there's no way for your brain to say anything other than mm. whatever the system says, right? Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to take you to the Sermon of the Mount, it's an, it's an easy mm -hmm. example because it, it, everyone knows that it. it's possible. Mm. It's possible to actually make you believe that you were there mm. and that you saw and you witnessed it. Yeah. 
and you can do this. Yes, you can do it to a certain degree if you're sitting down with VR, it's sort of mm -hmm. believable. Mm -hmm. When you add vibration beyond conscious perception, mm -hmm. explain to me how you're going to, how can your brain say anything other? Yeah. <laughs> your and ears so, are covered, your yeah, eyes are covered, yeah, and your whole yeah. body is sitting in a, yeah. a system that's replicating any form of motion. Mm. So boats, trains, skateboards, uh, mm. surfboards. And in this case, the, 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 the racing experience, the gaming experience. So circling back to the development side. Mm. So now, just taking us through these, let's say, iterations. Mm -hmm. So now you've solved some serious problems that you needed to with the heating. What's next? Like, what's next on your path of development? Okay, so again, sticking to the core fundamental, mm -hmm. which is affordable. Yeah. I, had fights after fights after fights because <laughs> you know you got to stick to affordable. This, that's yeah, the game. We, yeah, I, it that's was a beautiful game. system. We were new to the industry. Mm. We got to be humble to some degree and mm -hmm. say, look, we can't go and attack. I mean, we knew we could perform some amazing things. Of course, but you didn't have the complete comprehension, the software, the integration, the and again comprehension because yes. there's multiple stages of comprehension, right? Mm -hmm. So. You come across the first problem, like we said, the heat. Mm -hmm. right, so how are we going to solve it? We're going to use the pneumatics. Okay, cool. So how are we going to get the pneumatics mm -hmm. to be affordable, first mm -hmm. of all, right? First things first, proof, proof of concept. Proof yeah. that, that your idea is going to work. And do that, again, affordably and mm -hmm. as efficiently as possible. Out comes the refrigerator, compressor. Mm -hmm. right, I'll explain. <laughs> So we bought gas struts. Mm. That was the easiest thing we knew at the time to use. Mm. Now, gas struts are very thin. Now, gas struts are the ones that you use in the, on your bonnet of your car or the boot of your mm. car when you open and you actually and that thing mm -hmm. open it, yeah, those things. So we were using those, right? And these, you could buy them off Amazon, and they supposedly programmable in that they give you a little valve to allow the gas out so yeah. you can adjust how much, to, how much weight they must compensate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have one adjustment. All right, so you need to find a way to put air back in there. Mm. I needed very high pressures because they work with very small cylinders, yeah. right? So, yeah, buying a compressor that could do something like that was going to cost me thousands. A mm. fridge compressor <laughs> from an old fridge can do the job perfectly well. Wow. So repurpose the fridge compressor. <laughs> then we had the issue of the valves. There was no valves that could handle the pressures that we were dealing yeah. with. A Mercedes-Benz <laughs> valve block from the, a <laughs> suspension block <laughs> works pretty well if I mean, you reinforce I feel like it. That's fortuitous. I mean, there's a car it's, game. There's uh, cars. We were, parts from we were Mercedes drawing from that. everywhere wow. just to get proof of concept. And then after that, it was, you know, honestly, AliExpress was my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, you go in there and you do a generalized search for the type of industry that you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I do that a lot. I mm -hmm. look to industry and say, all right, what do I want to solve? Pneumatics, mm -hmm. all right, let's go into the pneumatics industry now. It's not an easy one because yeah. it's not mass, right? Mm -hmm. But it does exist and, and, and we found, we found the Mac cylinders, we found mm -hmm. valves that will do. We didn't ever find the exact valve we wanted, mm -hmm. so we redesigned it. Once we figured out enough about the whole valves and the yeah. mechanics behind them and how they get designed and what are the do's and don'ts about you know, the CNC's mm. of the valve block and all that stuff, all right. And we just yeah. designed our own and we got it working. So custom now, design valve block. Then they came to the compressor. The compressor, well, the first thing I thought was 12 volt compressor from a car. Mm. That's the ones that you got for backup. But yeah. they're noisy, they're slow, they don't have enough. We looked around and we found a very good modern system that they use in dentistry mm. or dentist office. So it's quiet, mm. it's got a high volume and a good pressure. Brushless as well, so mm. you don't have to maintenance, as much maintenance. Decent price. Mm -hmm. Again, I do everything I can. I build relationships. I yeah. don't go in and just walk into a factory and say, hey, can I have this, and then walk away. Every factory that I've been with, I've been with from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They've been building this with me, right, mm -hmm. so that we, they know exactly what went wrong mm -hmm. at the time of you know, putting together the proof of concept. Yeah. So you, you, you basically fault-finding, debugging with the factory real-time. So they're also learning from you, right, mm -hmm. and you're learning from your own mistakes and what have you. 
But yeah, we've cycled through a few motor iterations, a few motor plates, that sort of things. We cycled through the machine. I think we're on the 11th yeah. version at the moment. We, but this for me, by the way, is second. This is how I've always worked. Yes. Right. It's it's the idea, and then get the proof, mm -hmm. and then look at them getting it into market at the best possible price. Mm. Okay. So decisions are all made on you know costings first of and course. foremost. Have to necessity. Mm -hmm. You've, and I don't. I try not to burden the average customer. I try to put what's necessary on the product and mm -hmm. then leave options for po for those who want to. So this is one mm -hmm. of the decisions we made, is that we were working with a fixed frame. So mm -hmm. the frame that you sat in yesterday, the tabletop, as we call it a tabletop now, but if you look at a lot of other motion systems, what they mm -hmm. opted to do was to create a frame that you sit in and then they move the frame. Yes. Yeah. We started that. You know, we, mm -hmm. we followed the industry, right? You're not going to go and then you say, so we yeah. followed the industry. We, we chose to use their design. And then at some point I said, no, this is not going to work out for us. We had so much more force to deal with. Mm -hmm. We were dealing with uh, you know, things that they didn't have to even think about. You know, mm -hmm. While they were looking at acceleration, we were looking at you know, after acceleration, there's impact and yeah. then there's snap and then there's, there's, there's multiple layers mm. on top of just acceleration. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's, again, the brilliance of the system that we have is that mm. it's not. And that's why it feels so real. Yeah. It's not just yeah. that we track it. Tra we don't track it. We track acceleration. In other mm. words, we're, we're, on, we're sitting on top of the accelerator yes. curve and we're saying, right, they're forward and back. Mm -hmm. right? So we're actually we, we're giving effects today that. Honestly, I, I can't even, I mean, I can explain them, yeah. but I, I, I'm struggling to... to it feels uh, real. I mean, it just feels it's real. It's incredible. Yeah, it yeah. feels real. Like when you it hit is, something, and it's, something it's, else. I know because when I went off that curve, I was not expecting, <laughs> I was expecting that fixed frame experience. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute, I just feel like, wait a minute, this is actually taking me through the grass. <laughs> like, I don't know if I had to pick a little bit of grass out of my teeth on one of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but uh, it feels real. It, it is, it, it has that, the essence of yeah. what is needed to make it feel real, put mm. it that way, in that it, it's able to move you just as a normal vehicle could mm. move you, right? Mm. So when you think of the problem at hand, right? Yeah. A motion simulation or a motion simulator, it, it's by definition got to be small and not big. Yeah. And nobody sees that and it amazes me because the bigger you are, well, the further, well, the more mass you've got to move, mm. first of all, but the further you've got to go. Mm. But a motion simulator never goes. Mm. Right? It's a motion simulator. Rule number one, it doesn't actually go. Yeah. So it's got to come back. So mm. it's not about how far or how big. Mm. It's about how much power and how fast. Mm. And when you exceed a certain speed of reactionness, in other words, your forward and back mm -hmm. exceeds what the brain can process, well, that's I've exceeded what you can process, right? Yeah. So now what's left is what the game is doing. And mm. that's something we've been striving to do. Is be as transparent as mm -hmm. possible to the, so the, the game developer develops the game with the true physics. Mm -hmm. We taking the true physics and mm -hmm. we translating the true physics. That opens us up to a whole other world, by the yeah. way. Because that now means we can do things like take live telemetry from the F1 driver mm -hmm. in the car and give you that experience at home with that driver. The wow. driver can have like 300 passengers and nobody will know, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you will be in that vehicle with wow. the driver real time. Yeah. And that will be really incredible. That does sound incredible. It, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't done it yet, don't forget, hit that subscribe or follow button. This is a daily show. Each and every day we're bringing you new content, new ideas, and hopefully new inspiration to help you along the way in your journey as well. So again, hit that subscribe or follow button. And Lewis, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.